I'm joined now by Congressman Adam Schiff, the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Good morning, Congressman Good morning. Schiff. Let's start with your reaction to reports that Jared Kushner tried to set up a secret back channel with the Russians. Well, of course, I can't uh, confirm or deny whether they're accurate, uh, but if they are, it's obviously very concerning. Uh, and as you said at the top of the show, it's all about the context. Uh, John Brennan testified this week that what concerned him wasn't simply that the Russians were having contact with people associated with the Trump campaign, uh, that the Russians have contacts with uh, Americans quite routinely, but it was the context of an election campaign in which the Russians had been intervening to help Donald Trump, to hurt Hillary Clinton. Uh, and of course, if these reports are accurate, right after that campaign, after that intervention, to have uh, the president's son-in-law, a key player within the Trump uh, organization, trying to establish a back channel with the Russians uh, through a Russian diplomatic facility, you have to ask, well, who are they hiding the conversations from? Well, you're, you're, you're talking about context. So it would be okay if it was a back channel if all this other context hadn't happened. I know H.R. McMaster, the president's national security advisor, said he was not concerned about back channel communications. Historically, there have been back channels. You know, I was disappointed to see the general say that. I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, sadly, I think this is administration that takes in people with good credibility and chews them out and spits out their credibility uh, at the same time. Yes, that's true in the abstract, what General McMaster You're said. You're saying he's lost his credibility? Uh, no, McMaster? but I, I think that the, the, anyone within the Trump orbit is uh, at risk of being used. And what the general said here, uh, that may be true in the context where you're trying to arrange uh, secret talks with the Taliban uh, to negotiate uh, a, a peaceful resolution or you're trying to achieve the release of hostages. But for people associated with a campaign, after that campaign has ended uh, and where the Russians during that campaign were helping you, to try to establish a back channel uh, and hide it from your own government, that's The New York Times and ABC News have, have, have both reported that the, that the talks were about Syria, about the crisis in Syria and other policy matters. Well, that I don't think uh, necessarily mitigates this because, uh, of course, the Russians have their own object in Syria, very different than ours. They want to prop up Bashar al-Assad. Uh, our policy, at least at that time, if these allegations are correct, uh, was very much in opposition to the Russian policy. And if American policy was going to change for the wrong reason, that is, as a thank you to their intervention in the campaign, obviously that's very problematic, just as problematic as it would have been if the conversation was on relief of the sanctions over Ukraine. Now, again, this is all in the category of allegation. Uh, but it is something that our committee needs to get to the bottom of, uh, as well as Bob Mueller. Had your committee, can I ask you, seen any of this type of evidence at all up to uh, this point with Kushner? I can't, uh, I can't confirm or deny what we have seen. It, it, it was reportedly through monitoring of Ambassador Kislyak that this was discovered. Ambassador Kislyak has to know that he's monitored all the time. So could this be a ruse on the part of the Russians? Can you see any explanation why they would try to put this information out or get this information out or talk to each other thinking we'll think Kushner's involved, but he isn't? Uh, you know, again, I don't want to comment too much uh, beyond what is alleged here. Uh, you know, certainly in dealings with the Russians, they're very sophisticated. You always have to take into consideration that the Russians may be doing things that are designed to throw you off the track or uh, provoke discord. Uh, they're very sophisticated, so I don't think you can rule anything out. Can, can you see a reason? It, it, it's confusing to me why they would do this. It was back in December. Jared Kushner was not in government yet, didn't even have a security clearance. Well, you know, it, it's hard to understand uh, if these allegations are correct, why this would be some kind of a Russian ruse. Why would they want to undermine the very government that they hope to have a good relationship with? Uh, the incoming Trump administration. So I'm not sure you can see a motive for a ruse here. Uh, but again, all of this is still within the category of allegation. Uh, I do think ultimately we're going to want uh, Mr. Kushner to come before our committee. I fully expect that that will happen. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Mr. Mueller is going to want to look into these allegations as well. Do you, do you think because of these allegations she should stay in the White House right now? Well, you know, there's another question about uh, his security clearance uh, and whether he was forthcoming about his contacts on that. Uh, if these allegations are true and he had discussions with the Russians about establishing a back channel and didn't reveal that, uh, that's a real problem in terms of whether he should maintain that kind of a security should clearance. Should he maintain it now? I know the DNC says no. 
Well, I think we need to get to the bottom of these allegations, but I do think uh, there ought to be a review of his security clearance to find out whether he was truthful, whether he was candid. Uh, if not, then there's no way he can maintain that kind of a clearance. You know, this also came around the time that Kushner was reportedly looking for refinancing into one of his company's buildings on Fifth Avenue, and that he also met with an executive of a sanctioned Russian bank. Is that an issue? Well, it is an issue. And, and of course, uh, one of the things that the Russians do, and this is also in the category of allegation at this point, is they financially entangle people. Uh, and they like to do business with business people because they think they can exert economic influence over them in a way that will shape policy. So if that was what happened here or what was going on here, uh, yes, uh, it would be of deep concern, and that's something we need to get to the yeah. bottom of. There have been an extraordinary number of leaks since President Trump became president. Is that a reason that Jared Kushner, if the allegations are true, might have gone around and tried to back channel so it wouldn't leak? Uh, I don't think that would be a motivation here. Uh, to me, that would be require a certain uh, roundabout thinking that doesn't make sense, doesn't resonate with me. Uh, but you're right. I think leaks are an issue. Uh, they're an issue for every administration. They certainly are an issue for this one. Uh, if this material is accurate, these allegations are accurate, it represents another serious leak, um, and that's a problem. There have really been a couple of categories of leaks, uh, one that have potentially disclosed sources and methods. Those are the most troubling because it could dry up very important information for the U.S. government. Uh, the other is in the category of exposing malfeasance, and sometimes they overlap. Uh, but yes, we need to do everything we can to make sure that we're protecting our sources and methods. And let's move to the to the investigation in the House. What what is the mandate of your committee's investigation? What if, if it's a fact finding mission? What kind of action is possible? How do you prove intent? Could could ignorance of the law clear somebody? Well, ignorance of the law is an issue Bob Mueller will have to address because he's going to look into whether charges should be brought and, if so, against whom. Our responsibility is really very different. Our responsibility is to try to figure out what happened. What did the Russians do? How did they do it? Did they use U.S. persons in this? Uh, what was the U.S. government response? And ultimately, our most important responsibility is to tell the public what we learned, uh, tell the public what steps were recommended be taken to prevent this from happening again. Uh, so. Uh, in that respect, what the intent was, we'll want to report to the American people. Um, but uh, it doesn't, you know, disqualify our concerns about it. Uh, it will have its greatest impact on whether a case is prosecutable. Uh, but our job really is one of informing the public and uh, taking steps to protect the country. The Washington Post reports that the Gang of Eight was recently notified of a change in tempo and focus in the FBI investigation. If the pace of that investigation is increasing, does your committee need to take a step back? Well, that's a very important question, and I think the answer is no. We have two very different responsibilities. Before Bob Mueller was appointed, uh, we had a different contact at the Department of Justice to deconflict. So questions like immunity for Michael Flynn, we obviously want to talk to the Justice Department, find out what are their prosecution uh, equities here. Uh, that party has now changed. It's Mueller instead of uh, Rod Rosenstein. But our fundamental mission hasn't changed, and indeed, if you look at Rod Rosenstein's memo about the firing of Comey, his primary criticism was that Comey talked about the investigation at the time he closed the investigation back in July. What that means, because Mueller still works for Rosenstein, is that when Mueller is finished, if Mueller doesn't bring charges, Rosenstein is going to tell him not to talk about it at all. Why he didn't bring them, what he found, what he didn't find. If he brings charges against some but not others, he's not going to be able to talk about why he made those decisions. Uh, that's going to be our responsibility to inform the public and, and, uh, and so that work really has to go on and it needs to go on in parallel. We need to deconflict where possible, but that work has to go on. And, and just one final question. Does Congressman Devin Nunes still have a say on whether the committee issues subpoenas even though he stepped down as the, as the chair of that particular probe? Uh, he does. Uh, I don't think that he should, given that he has stepped aside or recused himself. What I have been urging is that we have a committee vote. Uh, that's a procedure that's provided for in our rules. Uh, or that the committee delegate to Mr. Conaway uh, with advice and consultation with myself. Uh, that's similar to what the Senate has done, and that's what I recommend we do here. Okay. Thanks very much for joining us this morning, Congressman. Thank you.